The crypto world is claiming that DeFi will disrupt traditional finance, yet conveniently overlooking a glaring issue in the DeFi space that will significantly hamper adoption. To make it worse, it's a problem where short-term greed fuels long-term complacency. But does Cardano have the answer? Hey there and welcome back to Red Sparks Crypto Blog for your crypto and Cardano news and analysis. Today we're going to be talking about crypto's dirty little secret. But before we get started, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you like it and consider following me on Twitter. Okay, let's get started. Crypto exchange Bitmart hacked with losses estimated at $196 million. Cream Finance exploited in flash loan attack, netting over $100 million. Grim Finance targeted by advanced hack, losses of over $30 million. And Poly Network suffers record-breaking $600.3 million hack. Now, while in some of these cases, the hacks may be due to genuine coding oversight, I will wager that in a substantial amount, there is some inside involvement. Think about it. What easier way to make money than to launch a DeFi application, bury a coding bug in it, disguise oneself as an anonymous hacker, then hack into your own product to steal money, all the while maintaining your innocence and promising to do better? Crypto's dirty little secret is that it's easy for devs to scam users while maintaining the air of legitimacy. Now, these are just some of the recent examples of money lost through hacks in the DeFi space. They add up to a mind-melting amount with $10 billion lost this year alone. Here we can see a list of hacks that have occurred this year and the chains that they've uh, occurred on. There's roughly around two or three hacks happening every month of this year with vast amounts of money being lost of 5 million, 120 million, 31 million, 55 million, and so on. This is a ridiculous amount of money. Let's take Burgersop for example. Missing line of code leads to $7.2 million exploit of Dex Burgerswap. Yet another DeFi platform has been exploited for millions of dollars. This time it's Burgerswap, a Dex on Binance Smart Chain. According to the block researchers Igor Gambadiev, an attack used flash loans to exploit the protocol for $7.2 million. Flash loans are blockchain-based loans where large amounts of tokens are borrowed, used for some purpose, and repaid all in the same transaction. But the attack was only possible because the exchange was missing a key line of code, one that it should have had, according to Hayden Adams, founder of the decentralized exchange Uniswap. Adams tweeted today that Burgerswap was based on Uniswap's V2 code, but a specific line of code had been removed so core could very trivially be drained. Now, perhaps this was an innocent mistake on the part of Burgerswap, and they did initiate a compensation payout. However, it only compensated some users and not others, leaving people feeling like they'd been scammed by the devs. It's impossible to know the truth. Moving on, with Grim Finance, it does look like it was due to a genuine coding error. Rugdoc did a detailed deep dive on this. The culprit? A before-after pattern without re-entrancy guard. This is a big no-no. A before-after pattern is a section of code that checks the vault balance before and after your deposit to figure out how much was actually received by the vault. From what I understand, the issue here is that you can confuse a system by doing numerous deposits in succession so that later deposits get double counted as belonging to earlier deposits. Seems like a pretty elementary weakness that ought to have been spotted. This then raises a question about the firm responsible for doing the audit on the code, Solidity Finance, who apologised and blamed it on their CTO being away during the code audit. When conducting the Grim Finance audit roughly four months ago, our firm was experiencing rapid growth in hiring. This audit was performed by an analyst who was new to the team and while our CTO was on vacation. Unfortunately, this issue was not caught in our peer review process. This seems like a rather weak excuse and casts a question mark over the quality 
and possibly the authenticity of the audit firms themselves. Finally, in the case of the Poly Network hack, the hacker gave back half of the funds with a promise to return the rest. They claimed they were doing it for fun, though their failed amateur attempt to escape with their loot may have something to do with it. These are some of the countless tales of money lost in the DeFi ecosystem. As this article reports, there have been more than 20 hacks this year where a digital robber stole at least $10 million in digital currencies from a crypto exchange or project. In at least six cases, hackers stole more than $100 million, according to the data compiled by NBC News. By comparison, bank robberies netted perpetrators an average of less than $5,000 per heist last year, according to the FBI's annual national crime statistics. And this is even before we factor in things like rug pulls, where founders over tokens sell all their tokens and disappear overnight. The cryptosphere is in dire need to get money loss caused by scams and theft under control. Mainstream news channels are starting to pick up on it, but despite the fact it has been going on for years, the appetite to tackle it does not appear to be there. The problem is exacerbated by the willingness of retail users to throw their money at anything in the hopes of getting rich quick, even if they suspect it may be a scam. Many of them think they can get out quickly enough, such as this user. After a couple of weeks of providing liquidity to various tokens, I stumbled across Polygold Finance. The yields were insane. I can't remember the exact numbers, but for the first few days, the percentage returns were double digits per day. After moving my funds out of Aave and depositing more via Fiat OnRam, I had put about 1,300 euros into DeFi. On the 9th of June, the contracts were changed to reduce the minting of Polygol to zero, reduce the dividends to zero, and change the time lock to two hours. I'm not savvy enough to explain how the rug pull was done, but essentially the developer shut down the project and sold his tokens, resulting in a price crash. He probably took all or most of the fees taken in until that point. Had this happened during the day, there would have been a reasonable chance that I would have spotted it and gotten out earlier as I tend to keep a close eye on my yield farms. However, this happened overnight. The end result is that when I removed my liquidity, my position had gone from a value of over $2,000 to about $200. It's this greed mentality in crypto that means nothing is ever really done about the scams and new projects that haven't been properly vetted can quickly pull in investor funds. So what can be done? Well, better regulation is one obvious answer. However, there are segments of the crypto community that oppose regulation of any sort. They believe that scams and thefts are a feature, not a bug, of a truly free market. That you can't claim to want freedom from governmental oversight, yet then complain when you get scammed. And that being exposed to such thefts and scams will harden the market against them naturally as people become better educated and gravitate towards platforms that are considered more secure. This, however, is idealistic thinking and assumes there are a fixed set of people who will become better informed over time, not that there is a constant supply of new and naive people entering the market. And while some want total freedom, the majority of people do not want to be responsible for learning how to audit code themselves or perform the relevant due diligence and risk mitigation on every DeFi project. People want a free yet fair playing field, not the Wild West. And regulation is coming. Over the next 12 months, I expect to see regulatory bodies around the world clamp down on the anonymous nature of DeFi. And such projects will need to start thinking seriously about how they could abide by KYC laws if they wish to move from being used by cowboys in the Wild West to citizens of civilised society. In addition, a spotlight may be turned on the world of DAP audit companies. Right now, anyone can set up shop and claim to be a provider of DAP audits, with only minimal existing cybersecurity regulation in place to abide by. An article by Confirm.com states that current laws governing audit companies are weak and are not designed for DeFi. The nature of having code created by a dissipated number of developers 
that makes automated decisions on all transactions raises a number of concerns in relation to current data and cybersecurity regulations such as GDPR and CCPA. These laws were set for organisations using technology or technology-first organisations that have centralised data processing and operations management. Code has traditionally been seen as an enabler to digitalization with human-operated systems. It has not been the sole driver. DeFi and DAOs change that nature and thus the right regulatory approach must be taken. They then go on to list 11 ways crypto orders can be better regulated. So regulation can help and are more than likely on their way. Exchanges like Binance, FTX and Coinbase are now engaging in discussions around regulation, albeit when faced with a threat of a heavy-handed SEC. But regulation alone will not prevent scams. What else can be done? Bringing certified dApps to Cardano. In this blog post from September, IOG outlined how an app store is being developed for dApps on the Cardano blockchain, along with an opt-in certification system. Cardano dApps can choose differing levels of certification from a quick and easy automated check at a very basic level to formally verifying the code written in Cardano's native language Haskell. So you have automated tooling, an in-depth manual audit and formal verification. At the simplest level, automated logic checks will enable us to detect certain types of malicious code. For example, these will be able to check if the contract does not contain a way for locked up funds to be recovered. In a well composed contract, locked funds need to be retrievable. Beyond that, manual smart contract auditing, the second category here, will help us verify any dApps integrity. Ultimately, full formal verification, the third column, will test the mathematical model to prove that a smart contract satisfies the formal specification of its behavior. Furthermore, a DAP store would help users identify what level of certification a DAP has received. Any DAP can exist on the store, whether certified or uncertified but we will provide users with clear information about a particular DAP certification status. The DAP store seeks not to act as a gatekeeper or judge, but rather to provide a platform for transparent user assessment. This raises a bar for DAPs that are responsible for handling large sums of money. For such DAPs to attract a large number of users, they would need to ensure they get audited Meanwhile, lightweight dApps that aren't responsible for millions of dollars worth of crypto can still be deployed easily and have the automated check performed. The audit firms themselves have been carefully selected with runtime verification, tweak, well typed and certic currently being used. Now, of course, this does not guarantee that a dApp is going to be hack proof or scam proof. However, Combined with Cardano's native language Plutus, which enforces a stricter and in a lot of way simpler programming methodology, the risk of software bugs is certainly significantly reduced. Smart contracts in Plutus are functional programs and the simple and verifiable semantics of functional languages underpins what we do with both automated testing and formal verification. We want to build a more secure foundation than other chains. So to recap, Cardano smart contracts are written in Haskell, which itself is a fairly rigid language designed to prevent bugs. Plutus, the programming model for Cardano, is built on an EUTXO model where the outcome of a transaction is known as soon as the code starts running. The Grim Finance bug, for example, could not occur on Cardano. The EUTXO model also makes it easier for auditors to check the code and even formally prove the on-chain code does what it's supposed to do. The DAP store allows users to identify high quality DAPs and thus encourages legitimate projects to get themselves audited. And finally, Cardano's decentralized identity solution, Atala Prism, positions it well for dealing with any KYC regulations that crop up. 
Time will tell how successful all this is. Scams like rug pulls will still be hard to prevent. But whether it's through better coding, better standards or better regulation, one thing is certain. For DeFi to become mainstream, the crypto industry needs to do more to counteract the vast sums of money lost to thefts and scams, rather than keeping it a dirty little secret. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up down below and consider subscribing if you haven't already and follow me along on Twitter if you want to keep up to date on my daily ramblings. Other than that, I hope you all have a great day.